When you see this cute, fluffy creature, you might think that's some new popular breed of domestic cats. But don't be fooled by its size, thick coat, and cute, fluffy cheeks. Sand cats are incredibly skillful and ruthless hunters. They eat everything they can find in the desert, which is full of dangerous prey. There are, of course, bugs, centipedes, mice, and other rodents, hares, birds. But what about snakes? Among the nomads of the Sahara Desert, sand cats have a reputation for hunting snakes, especially horned vipers. They stun prey by rapidly striking its head with their paws, and then finish it off with a strong bite to the back of the head or neck. They're so skillful at it that the snake doesn't even have time to bite back. The same goes for scorpions. Yes, they can be deadly, but not for sand cats. Sand cats can eat scorpions if they end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sand cats are the only ones from the entire feline family who predominantly live in actual deserts. They prefer areas with sparse vegetation mixed with sandy and rocky areas. These places seem ill-suited for life. There's sand everywhere. It's hot during the day and cold at night. But sand cats feel just fine. They can tolerate temperatures from 23 to 126 degrees Fahrenheit. To live comfortably in such conditions, sand cats settle in burrows left by foxes or rodents, expanding them if needed with their powerful but blunt claws. If there's no suitable burrow around, they may dig their own. Sometimes sand cats can be spotted lying on their backs near burrows during the daytime. It's believed that this is how these animals shed their internal heat. Today, scientists know that sand cats live in the Sahara Desert, throughout the Arabian Peninsula and in parts of Central Asia including Turkmenistan, Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. But there's no certainty that this data paints a full picture. How come? Well, sand cats obviously don't want to be seen by anyone, especially by humans. For example, the Arabian subspecies of sand cats was spotted once in the UAE in 2005, and then no one heard about it for 10 years straight, like at all. It wasn't until 2016 when they managed to see and also take a picture of Arabian sand cats with the help of a camera trap. No wonder sand cats are called one of the most difficult cats to study in the wild. They're truly elusive. There are several reasons for that. First, sand cats always carefully bury their excrement, and scientists simply can't find them, pick them up, and study them in order to understand what these desert predators eat. Second, they have fur on their paws. It protects sand cats from both hot sand and cold. The fur on the underside of the paws also acts as a cushion, which allows sand cats to walk on the sand without sinking. Just think about it. These little cute cats, capable of killing a horned viper with a couple of blows, also walk without leaving any footprints. At all. No wonder researchers can't study them properly. It's hard to study someone whose presence you can't even notice. Well, third, as I already said, sand cats don't want to be noticed. They've even been seen closing their eyes at night when people approach them. What for? To eliminate reflection and blend in completely with their environment. Of course, being elusive helps cats during the hunt, but the ability to leave no footprints alone is not enough, so sand cats got a few more perks from evolution. When there's only sand around, it's quite hard to pick up the movement of the prey. Also, the dry, hot air absorbs the sounds. To solve this issue, sand cats listen with their huge, low-set ears on the sides of their heads. Well, if sand gets into these large ears, it can harm cats, which is why the inside of the ear is covered with thick, white hairs, which probably act as protection against sandstorms. Their tympanic, meaty, and bully are enlarged. This also makes the hearing of sand cats sharper. As a result, these predators hear so well, they can detect their prey even underground. Actually, digging is almost the key hunting strategy of sand cats. Many of the small animals that make up their diet live in burrows, which means sand cats have to get them out of there. Well, when you can dig a burrow 15 feet deep while being only 20 inches in size, there are no problems with digging any lizards out of the sand, and since there's nowhere else to hide in the desert, the prey simply has no chance. By the way, digging helps sand cats not only build dwellings and catch lunch, if there's too much food, the predator carefully buries it in the sand to eat later. Another trick that helps sand cats be successful hunters is the way they move. When walking, they stay close to the ground. It's most likely safer to move like this because there aren't many objects in the desert to hide behind. But although the sand cat moves in such a strange way, it can run very fast if it has to. Imagine you'd need to move quickly while squatting. 
I don't know whether it's possible in the first place, but for sand cats, that's easy. They actually have incredible stamina. If necessary, the sand cat activates a turbo mode and runs at a speed of 19 to 25 miles per hour. There are confirmed reports of sand cats that traveled 6 miles over one night, though this figure usually averages at 3 miles. Well, that's the best estimate scientists got for the creatures that leave no footprints at all. But if you think that escaping the heat in burrows is the best plan the animals can come up with, then you simply haven't heard about kangaroo rats. These rodents also live in very dry regions, and not only dig holes, but also seal them off to prevent hot air from getting inside and maintain the required humidity level. For the same reason, kangaroo rats bury their noses in the fur during sleep to lose less moisture. They usually get all the moisture from the seeds they feed on. These seeds look dry, but kangaroo rats can extract 0.02 ounces of water from every 0.04 ounces of seeds eaten. And to make the food moister, sometimes by as much as 30%, they store it underground. Another secret is that their cheek pouches and mouth are separate, so kangaroo rats don't waste saliva while foraging for food. And in order to completely protect themselves from moisture loss, they spend 75% of their time in cool burrows. Well, when I say cool, this doesn't mean that animals have climate control systems underground. By human standards, these cool burrows are damn hot. Scientists measured the temperature in the burrows of kangaroo rats and in the deepest area, roughly 24 inches below the surface, the temperature reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit. To get to at least 86 degrees, you need to dig 8 feet into the ground, and this requires a lot of energy. The typical burrow of a sand cat is 5 feet deep, so it's also hot there. It's just that animals, especially desert ones, perceive temperature in a completely different way than humans. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot to mention another fact about sand cats. They don't meow. Strictly speaking, they don't make that many sounds in the first place, but if they do, they sound more like barking. Yes, we have barking cats here. They bark in order to find a mate. This sound is compared with those made by small dogs like a chihuahua. But in the desert, there are very large distances between sand cats, so they bark very loudly, especially for their size. However, being big when you live in the desert is not the best strategy. Being small makes more sense and helps survive in the heat. The Repel's fox knows this very well. Its small body dissipates heat better. As a bonus, Repel's foxes also excrete very concentrated urine to conserve moisture. By the way, kangaroo rats concentrate their urine to almost a crystal-like consistency. Sand cats haven't yet reached this point, as far as I know. We still don't know a lot about these animals, but they also adapted to the lack of water. They can almost live without it. Sand cats can survive for weeks without taking a single sip, getting all the moisture they need from their prey. Not all desert animals are lucky to have such adaptations. And that's why donkeys came to their rescue. Yeah, donkeys and horses. A study published in 2021 in the Science Journal reveals that when wild horses and donkeys dig wells, they increase water availability for other species. Groundwater then becomes accessible to all creatures of arid regions, including badgers, mountain lions, and birds. Almost 60 species in total. Some wells apparently even help the desert trees grow. Overall, these wells are such a benefit to desert flora and fauna that wild horses and donkeys can be considered real heroes. In 2015, feral donkeys even saved the life of a man who got lost in Death Valley. The hiker didn't know where to go, felt very thirsty, and survived only because he followed a group of feral donkeys. They brought the poor fellow to a source of water where he waited for a week. He survived, but only thanks to the donkeys. So I'm officially giving donkeys the title of good boys of this video. Give them a round of applause. As you already realized, animals in the desert actually try very hard to get water. We've already talked about much of this, but here's another interesting example. This is a Namib desert beetle. To survive in this arid region of southwest Africa, it harvests water from the air. The blueberry-sized insect tilts its body, letting droplets of fog accumulate and drip down its wing case into its mouth. 
Yes, just like that. The beetle has the right body texture for this. Scientists even calculated that its body surface with microscopic lumps captures water two and a half times more efficiently compared to a smooth one. And the beetle feels great, even though the Namib Desert only gets 0.2 to 3.3 inches of rain a year. The prairie rattlesnake went even further. When it rains, it crawls out and coils in a special way. The snake's body sort of flattens, and raindrops accumulate on the scales due to the labyrinth-like texture. It prevents drops from sliding off, so the rattlesnake, in fact, turns itself into a bowl collecting water. A very useful skill when you live in the desert. And you know, throughout the entire video, I can't help thinking that living in such conditions is just terrible. This means a constant struggle not only with predators and rivals, but also with the forces of nature. However, desert animals actually live just like other animals in different habitats. Carla Moeller, an ecological physiologist at Arizona State University, compares this to the life of a fish in the ocean. Is it difficult for fish to swim all the time? I don't think so, since they evolved to live in water. The same goes for desert animals. They live amidst heat and sand because they've adapted to it. If life in the desert were as unbearable as it seems to people, cats wouldn't tolerate it. They would rather move to another place. Well, or die out, because that's how natural selection works. Many desert animals need heat to thrive. If you pick them up and put them in an environment that we might find much more pleasant, like a temperate forest, most of them will just suffer. So sand cats can't live in captivity. They always feel bad outside of their usual habitat and even get sick all the time. Some people mistake them for good pets because, well, they're so small and fluffy and seem harmless. But that's a big mistake. As you already realize, sand cats are ferocious predators, and although humans aren't on their menu, cats can still cause serious injuries. Sand cats are wild animals that can't be tamed, even if you adopt one as a kitten. So let the desert predators stay in the desert. It'll be better for all of us. See you later.